Paying for ads to get visitors to your Shopify store is getting super expensive. What if I told you that there was a way to get visitors to your store for free? Well, there is, and it's called SEO or search engine optimization. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the exact steps and things that you need to do on your Shopify store to set it up so that you can get ranked in search engines and you can get traffic for free forever. I've also created an SEO checklist that you can use to follow along in this video so you can implement it directly in your store. My name is Brendan Gillen and I've been working in e-commerce for over 10 years for some multi-million dollar global brands and I now run my own seven-figure Shopify store. I'm a Shopify partner and an e-commerce coach and my mission is to help e-commerce entrepreneurs just like you start, grow and scale your e-commerce stores using the expertise and experience that I've picked up working within these brands. So what is is SEO. The main goal of SEO is for your website to be found when someone types in a search term into the search engine and yours comes up. The goal is to get your website up as high as possible in the search engines to give you the best chance of being found. This is what we call your search engine ranking. So to do this, we need to optimize your store in such a way that the search engines know exactly what your store is about and that they think that your store is the best result for what the person has searched for in the search engine. Now these keywords form the base of all SEO and we're gonna go through exactly how to find the right keywords for your store now. So to choose your keywords, I use a free tool by Google, which is called the Google Keyword Planner. Now, when we use this tool, what we want to do is we want to put the search term in that we think our customer is going to type in when they're trying to find something that's on our store. Now, the Google Keyword Planner is going to come back with a whole heap of results and it's going to help us choose the exact keywords that are going to help us rank on our store. Let's jump across to the Google Keyword Planner now. So this is it here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in a keyword based on a test store that we have. Now I have a store that is selling handmade soap. So ideally we want someone to find us if they type in the term handmade soap. And then we click get results. Now what this tells us is a couple of important pieces of information. The first one is the keyword that we search for, which is handmade soap. It tells us how many monthly searches that people are doing for this exact keyword. Then it tells us relevant keywords to this and how many searches there are. So we can see that natural soaps get 720 average searches, handmade soap near me is only 90, handmade soaps is 320, and so on and so on. Now the reason this is important is we wanna choose keywords that have high average monthly searches. There's no point choosing keywords that have low monthly searches because even if you do get ranked, there's not gonna be much traffic from those keywords. So what we're going to do here is we're going to choose three keywords. We're gonna choose one primary keyword that we want to rank for, and then we're gonna choose two supporting keywords. So let's choose the one that has the most volume that's the most relevant, and then let's choose two more that have good volume that are relevant to the main keyword. So I'm gonna choose handmade soap because I know that's one that I want to rank for, and that's gonna be my primary keyword. And now I'm gonna find secondary keywords that are relevant to that. So let's have a look. Natural soaps has 720, so I think that's a good one. That's gonna be my secondary keyword. Now we've got homemade soaps is 320, and that's probably the next highest one. And we've got natural soap bars. So I'm going to choose homemade soaps. So my primary keyword is going to be handmade soap and my secondary keyword is going to be natural soaps and homemade soaps. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I've created a little checklist that we can use. So I'm gonna write these keywords directly into this checklist. Okay, so we're gonna go handmade soap. Natural soap. I apologize for my messy writing. Now that we know what keywords we want to rank for, we need to put them within our Shopify store so that search engines can find them and rank us for those keywords. Now, search engines actually look at the code in the back of your website. They don't see what we see and they look for certain tags in the code. Now, luckily for us, because we're using Shopify and a Shopify theme, all this code gets created for us. We just need to put it in the right spots in Shopify. So the places that we need to fill in is something called our title tags. We need to fill in our H1 tags, which are our headings. We also need to fill in the text that's on our page and all of these need to have both your primary keywords and your secondary keywords so that when the search engines take a copy of your page, they know exactly what it's about because you've put the keywords in the right places. So I'm gonna show you exactly where to put that now. Let's start with our collection pages. So to get to our collection pages, we go across to products and we click collections. 
Now I've got a couple of test collections here. So let's go through this. I'm gonna go into the handmade soap one. Now when we talked about the H1, that's this section here. So in here, we want to make sure we have the primary keyword. This is the area where we put in the text. This is where we want to write a description about our collection and we want to include our primary and our secondary keywords. And then finally down the bottom, we have this search engine listing section. Edit here. What we can do is we can add in the page title. That's the title tag I was talking about. And then we create a little description which has both the primary keyword and the secondary keywords in it. And as a little bonus tip, you should put your keyword in this URL handle here as well. So if we know where to write things, how do we know what to write? Well, luckily for you, there's a cool tool out now, which is called ChatGPT. And I recently created a video exactly how to use it to create these sort of descriptions for SEO. So click the link on the screen and it's gonna take you directly to that video. And then once you've got those descriptions, we jump back into Shopify and we paste them in the right spot. We paste the long text into the paragraph section. And we also get the meta description and we put it down the bottom. And there you have it. You've now got your SEO set up for your collection pages. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click save. Now that the collection page is done, we're going to do the same thing with our product pages. We follow the exact same steps in our product pages, but there's one change. Let me show you what I mean. So we fill in everything exactly the same. Title goes in here with the keyword. We have our long description here with our keywords in there as well. We go through and we make sure that our metadata and everything is in there. But the one change we need to do is we need to add something called alt tags. Now an alt tag is something that we put over the top of an image to tell the search engines what the image is. Search engines can't interpret what an image is right now, so we need to tell it. So we need to give it a description so that when it takes a copy of that image, it knows exactly what it's about and it's gonna rank you for it. Ideally, your images should be images that are related to the keywords that you want to rank for. So there's no point selling natural soap and having a picture of socks on there and writing socks. We want to make sure that we have pictures of natural soap on there and we want to tell the search engines that it's a picture of natural soap. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. We click the image that we want to add the alt text to. And then over on the right hand side, we're going to see something here which is called edit alt text. Now on this alt text, we want to make sure that we put the keyword we want to rank for in it, but we also want to be descriptive about what the image is. So here's something that I've written. Absolute avocado natural soap. So we're talking about the product name as well as the keyword in here. And we've also said, what the angle of the image is. Now, the reason we do this is we often have multiple images of our products, so we don't wanna have duplicate content. We want to make sure that every image is slightly different from an alt tag perspective, as well as an angle perspective. So if I had multiple images on this product, it might be avocado natural soap front side, avocado natural soap back, close up, detail, color, just so that Google and other search engines know that each of the images is slightly different, but they're still related to that one keyword. Now image alt tags are super important and it's really gonna help your site rank. So take the time and the effort to update all the image alt tags on your product pages. Awesome, so now that you've done your collection pages and your product pages and your alt tags, what we want to now do is create fresh content every month. Search engines reward you if your site is active and constantly updating. And the best way to do that is to create blog posts. I recommend creating a blog post at least once a month, if not once a fortnight, if you can do it. Now, to come up with ideas for blog posts can be pretty hard, but I use a tool which is called Answer the Public and it gives me hundreds of ideas for blog posts. This is Answer the Public here. I've just typed in the term natural soap and it's come back to me with hundreds of ideas for different blog posts. Check this out. Where to buy natural soap. Here it's got, does natural soap work? What are the natural dish soaps? What are natural soaps? Is natural soap vegan? All of these can be amazing blog posts that I could write about. So take these, create a schedule of blog posts and post them up every two to four weeks on your website, making sure that you include the keywords you want to rank for, you update the meta description, you update the titles and the headings. So now that we've done that, we now need to update our Shopify store from a general perspective. We need to make sure that our store is named correctly and we have the right description on our homepage. So to do that, we go to our online store and we click preferences here. What we're going to do is we're going to see homepage title. This is the same as the title tag that we see on the other pages. So we want to include our keywords in here.
and we also want to include a meta description. You could use ChatGPT to generate this for you as well. So I'll just paste mine in here. And a little tip is make sure you include a call to action here. What that does is if someone sees your listing in search engines and it has a call to action, it encourages them to click through to your website. So now that's done, we need to do a little bit of techie stuff to tell our search engines what we're about. The first one is what we call the sitemap XML. Now, because we're using Shopify, sitemap XMLs are automatically generated, which is really, really helpful. Once we know the URL to the sitemap XML, we need to send that to something called the Google Search Console. So you can find your XML here. It'll be your domain forward slash sitemap XML. And then what that does is it uses code to tell the search engines every single link and page that is on your website. It then puts those pages directly into its search engine so that people can find them. It then puts those pages directly into the search engine so that people can find them when they type in the keywords. And the last techie thing we need to do is a domain redirect. You may not realize it, but your website actually has two domains. It has www.yourcompany.com or it just has yourcompany.com. So what we need to do is we need to choose one of those and tell Shopify which one it is that we want to rank for. And Shopify makes this super easy to do. So I'll show you how to do it. If we go over to settings and then we go to domains, here we can see that we've got multiple domains. We've got ecohut.com.au, we've got the .myshopify one, and we've got the www.ecohut. Now I've already done the redirect and often by default Shopify will do that for you. And what you'll do is you'll see this part here that says redirects. Now, if you don't see this, you're going to see a little button down the bottom here that says redirect all domains and you're going to be able to choose the domain that you want to redirect it for. This is pretty important because we only want to rank for one domain. If we rank for two, then it means that traffic's going to be split between the two and you're not going to rank very well for anything. So there you have it. That's Shopify SEO for beginners on how to set it up correctly. Now we want to make sure we do this for every collection page, do it for every product page and consistently create blog posts to keep your store ranking. Now we also got to make sure that we do the techie stuff as well so that we tell the search engines the right language that they need to know. Now I have created a little checklist and it looks a little bit like this that takes you through exactly what we talked about, where and how to put in the keywords. It shows you where to put them on the product page, it shows them where to put them on the collection pages and it tells you all about keyword planning. So if you want a copy of this checklist, I've put a link down below. It has everything you need to get your store ranking in Shopify. Now, I really hope you liked this video. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment down below on any other videos you might want me to teach for you.